well, let's join the rapid pool. And let's take a look at the requests. Alapin, Ponziani, Wing Gambit. Okay, I'll play E4. And, ooh, let's play Wing What's Gambit. What's the last thing you took a picture of? Or let's play, maybe let's play Alapin? Let's play Alapin. That was one of the most recent requests. And it's a bit more sound, especially for a higher rated opponent. Um, I'll have to check my photos. Not entirely sure. I took a photo of a check to like deposit it via mobile. Um, that's maybe not not the most exciting thing. <laughs> not something I'm gonna share on stream. All right, let's play d4. And then I believe knight f3 is a move. Take. I really don't know so much theory here. I told a joke at a Zoom meeting, but nobody laughed. Oh, that's Turns kind of sad. Out I am not remotely funny. Oh, ah, remotely funny. <laughs> I found that remotely funny. All right, Knight C three is not the main move. I actually have a story behind this move, which I like vaguely remember back from when I was rated like sixteen hundred. Um, depending on what my opponent does. I'll tell the story during the game or after the game. But my opponent's thinking here. I think the main move is like bishop c4, maybe takes. Happy 11 months, winking face. Thank you, Karst. Thank you, Munchie. H. Bazi. Oh no, my Italian. Yeah, you can't really play the Italian against the Sicilian. Even though Italy and Sicily are kind of very much related. Um, yeah, the C3 Sicilian is actually a close relative of the Ponziani, like going for the quick D4, getting the pawn center. I was featured in Zefcat's most recent chess vlog. I don't remember being filmed. I'll have to check it out. There were maybe like a dozen of us that went to a Thai restaurant. I wonder if that dinner was filmed. <laughs> Are you going to do any PogChamps coaching? Um, I have not been asked. But if there's any PogChamps participants out there that want coaching, hit me up. Um, I don't think they've announced all the players, though. I did see the, like, what was it, the chess.com update stream a few days ago. Okay, this is the best move. Um, what am I supposed to do here? I think I'm supposed to take... I could take with knight too, like takes. It leads to some end game. Maybe take here. That way. If I take this way, there's takes, 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 and not so fond of that position. Yay. Eric is live. Let's go. Um, if I take this way after takes, I can be the first one to initiate the queen trade. I am winding up with some slightly damaged structure, have an isolated C pawn, slightly overextended E pawn, but this can be a double edged sword. It could be a target or a strength. Hey, it's a rune with a super chat, except it's not called super chat. What's it called on Twitch? Hype chat? I think I really, I just really need to try pinning the thing, this pinning thing. 
Uh, that's one way to execute a pin. Okay, let's take and then take the knight. Okay, so queens are off the board, but it's still an interesting kind of imbalanced position because the black king could definitely be a target if I get a rook to the d file. If it goes here, maybe my bishop comes here. I mean, black did have knight takes d8, but that maybe wasn't so pretty. Yeah, I got the first hype chat, or got my first hype chat on this channel a few days ago from Nate Brady. And before then, I didn't know it was a thing on Twitch. Oh, thank you, Pak Shipman. Okay, so time is very much in my favor. Opponent's taking a long time in the opening. F6. And feels like this move should be a mistake, although I'm not sure if it's punishable. Like, I want to play bishop f4. Let's calculate. Bishop f4, g5. Rook d1. Bishop d7 is e6. King here, bishop g3. There's, f5 doesn't work. What if king e8? Watching from London. Oh, nice. Shout out to London. One of my favorite cities and favorite openings. I'm gonna play bishop f4. It's a bit more intuitive. Black can play g5. But then after check, I could also queenside castle. Where does my king want to be? Yeah, actually, maybe I should queenside castle. <laughs> Forgot that was even an option. Because there's so many cases where the rook wants to come to e1 later. So I do free the square. And now bishop g3. If I get my bishop here, it's checkmate. But that's kind of hard to do. Remind me later. Okay, bishop g3. We might see g4. So I guess I should be calculating here. G4 hits a knight. Probably play knight d4. And then black could throw in this check. King b2 and then take and then take, take. Knight b5 threatening knight c7. Black will have the two bishops. But I'll have a tricky knight. King f8, knight c7, rook b8, bishop c4. I think like eventually the rook will come to e1. The pawn is a long-term weakness. And c3 is not too weak, as long as my king defends it. There's another line, like g4, knight d4 takes. I might probably take with pawn. Bishop e6, another option. So do I care about a2? Kind of. It's very tempting to just develop. Bishop b5 takes then knight d4. Yeah, let's prioritize development. It's the type of move that kind of play without too much calculation. Two years incoming. I wish you good chess today. Thank you. I'll try. 
Now if bishop takes, I have rook d7, so it's still not a concern. I mean, probably rook e1. I might see rook c8, king b2. Yeah, the king's just better on b2. Defending the undefended pawns. Or the previously undefended pawns. I'm trying to imagine, like, if knight takes, can I sack the exchange? Feels close to working. I guess there's also bishop takes and then take. Oh, actually, knight takes, 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 takes. King here takes, takes, check. I win the rook in the end. Yeah, black has to be really careful. The king, bishop, and rook are all potential targets. Time is getting lower. Ah, if the knight moves to c4, maybe I can take here. Whatever it takes, I take king takes and then bishop d7 again. If knight c4 is thrown in, I just probably move back. Yeah, black has to be really careful here. I'm realizing I didn't tell the story about the opening. This knight c3 move on move 7. But my opponent didn't go into the line that had a story. So I'll share it after the game. Bishop g7. Looking for tactics, but not seeing much. If I take knight d4 is a move. I take, let's assume pawn takes. And then in rook d6, maybe there's some initiative. The bishop takes is also interesting. C3 is a target, but so is g5. Is there a line takes here, 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 king here? I guess I maybe have a draw with perpetual? I'm calculating uh, takes, 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 check here, and then bishop f7. There's no way that works, though. Like, there's bishop c3 there, probably. I'm still inclined to take. Bishop takes, then maybe knight e5 check. It shouldn't be worse for white. Could consider taking here as well. Take, take, check, king f5. Feels really close. Greetings from Arizona. Greetings. I'm not seeing anything clear though. I play rookie three. Double up. Maybe rookie three is a nice kind of preparatory move. Keeping some tension. Yeah, black's probably slightly for choice here. Still up a little bit of time. So one idea is to double, which I might as well do. 
I have to watch out for rook d2 if the knight moves. But I am hitting the bishop. Okay, knight e5. We might just be simplifying. Knight e5. Take, take. Oh, g2's hanging at some point. I don't know if black has time to take it, though. I mean, even though it's kind of, it could simplify, it could also be very sharp because both kings are targets. For example, like takes, 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 check. Could maybe win back a pawn. This will be a very interesting game to analyze. Okay, even if I'm worse here, the time situation should save me. King g7, f3 comes to mind. This move also comes to mind. Let's start with f3. Yeah, just restricting the bishop. Okay, so I can't play knight g4. h4 is a move. Bishop d3, perhaps. Hmm. And bishop d bishop d three take 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 should be okay. There's an idea of bishop f five. Oh, that move I kind of forgot about. Should have seen coming. Have to take. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, no, I have bishop b5. But there's this move. This move, this move, this move, this move. But I don't think black has time to actually take on h2, because I save the knight and stop the pawn. And there is, like, this, 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 hitting this, but then I have check. Yeah, I think it's still okay. Wow. Oh, my rook's attacked. Nothing I can do now. We're just trading a lot, though. Should take on e7 first. I'm going to be up a pawn in the end somehow. Also, like, this is not mate. Okay, let's take. Can black take here first? Cause my knight is trapped. Wow. What a crazy line. If I play here, it takes. I should probably take on b7. And then go after the pawn. My king is closer. So if anything, white is still for choice. Trying to win that pawn. Mission accomplished. Safe move. Uh, let's play this. Okay. 
Not the best free move for my opponents. <laughs> okay. That was um That was an interesting fight. Uh let's analyze. Is he live right now? I'm live and a live. Okay, let's What's the last photo I took that I can show? I'll share one of the last photos I took. It's of a bird that looks like a cartoon. This is <laughs> this is uh from my trip to the zoo the other day. It's not a duck. I forget what you call it, but it's one of these creatures with wings that can maybe fly. Has like a small built-in hat that's orange. Its eyes are very um very cartoon like I would say. <laughs> that's evolution. Oh, Possum redeems share a photo. Did Possum was Possum here the other day? For the photo that I shared of the the possum? <laughs> I took a walk a few days ago and this guy was just chilling. What's the mid journey prompt for the bird? Yeah, this was this was old old school. Instead of like using mid journey to generate weird animals, I went to the zoo to just take a picture of weird animals. Not that it's weird. It's um it's natural. I couldn't tell if it was staring at me. Just wanted to get out of its cage. Oh, and then there was um, what do you call it? A orangutan. I was just taking a nap on a bed of of hay. I think there were a few of them. So anyway, um, let me share some takeaways from this game. Also, welcome back, Vampire Chicken and Pam and Bracken Dawson. Possum with the pog champ. More like poss more like possum champ. <laughs> Have to make a new emote. Someone should um should ask mid midjourney to generate an image of a possum with like a meme face expression for pog champ. And we'll make a new emote. Anyway. Yeah, so I'll admit that I really don't know so much theory in this line because when I play Sicilian's Black, I like to play d5. Like Knight of 6 and d5 are basically the two main moves to play against Alep and Sicilian. And the point of d5 is after takes, queen takes, white doesn't have knight c3. So in some sense, it's kind of like an improved Scandinavian. But there's a lot of theory around this position, which I'm more familiar with. So what we got in the game... I was aware that, well, first of all, I think bishop c4 is like more popular. Master's database. Oh, both moves are playable. So in this position, bishop c4 is a main move. Knight c3 is only played 5% of the time. And I think objectively, it's like not a great move. But um, the story behind knight c3 when I was growing up, I had a good friend who was like around my rating for many years, and he was pretty obsessed with the C3 Sicilian, what we played in this game. And for many years, he really liked this move, Knight C3. And there was one tournament where he got this position against Grandmaster Yuri Shulman. And this was back in maybe 2004 2005 and i remember at least the opening of that game because my friend at the time was like rated 1600 and he played this move against shulman shulman was rated like 2600 like maybe won the u.s championship around that time and in that game yuri took on c3 my friend took back. Shulman takes on e5. And then after d5, like white is already pretty much crushing. 
And it's an easy blind spot because when you're calculating this from a distance, you're thinking takes, 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 takes. And it's a better end game for black, like just to show. Um, it's easier to assume you, know, you can just force this as black. But with inclusion of d5, white's in no rush to regain the pawn. And yeah, if we turn on the engine, um, white's already much for choice. Now, apparently e4 is the best move. I remember Shulman played knight b8. And then after takes, uh, white has like a just really good position. Um, so it's a cool, like kind of nifty trap in a, a lesser be or lesser common line. Uh, now my friend still lost the game, but there is a point in that game where like black's king walked and it was almost a mating attack. So going back, I think what my opponent did was the best approach is to take first on e5. Because I don't have time to include this move pawn d5. And okay, I took back after takes. It's it's close to equal. Maybe black is slightly for choice. But I was as we saw, it was still a fight. Like after the queen trade, I took. Oh, engine says knight d8 is for choice. So let's just go forward a little bit. Um, maybe there are some improvements. But it was still roughly equal. Yeah, I really wanted to play this move. The engine says it's a draw because there's a perpetual here, here, and then here. I thought this line would be funny, but um, yeah, white doesn't have anything better than just repeating. So that didn't happen. And then, yeah, at some point I was like much worse. Oh, black could take and take. And then this was just crazy. So black should take here leaving the bishop attacked, and then there's issues with c3. Bishop f2. Look at this move, bishop e8. It's hard to find, though. If I defend? Rook d2. Ah. So the only, like... Oh, I have rook c1, though. The black is just in full control. The pawn is so weak. So that didn't happen. Rookie 7 was a blunder because of what happened in the game. Wow. I didn't realize I was like so much losing. Why is white losing here? Rook h1. Oh, just rook h8. Is it really that bad for white? And the pawn is like scary, but it's also blockaded. I guess I assumed that I could maneuver my bishop to h3. But Black's king is in time to come to g3. And I'm a little bit slow to get to f2. Like after this, 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 this. And Black's just winning. Wow. So I'm very fortunate my opponent didn't simply defend the pawn. Okay. So that was the first game of the stream. I gained seven rating points. Trying to gain back some rating, get closer to 2700. Let me cross off. I was very close to playing the wing gambits, but I played the. Wait, a poss Wait, what's a possum opening? <laughs> I have to look that up. So I played the Alapin. I hope Gaston LV was here. Crust was. 32 minutes ago, so now 33 minutes ago. Mark is complete. Okay. I have not played the Falcon yet. It's not on this list, I don't think. Elephant Gambit for Vampire Chicken. Scotch Gambit. Do you remember the first time you beat a GM or title player? Also, when you sleep, do you have dreams about chess? And what do they contain? 
Yeah, the first titled or the first uh, Grandmaster I beat was a 2009 US Open. Um, it was actually, it was one of my most memorable games because I won with black in 16 moves. It was against John Fedorowicz. And you can, you can see the video here. Let me just grab the link. I made this video like ages ago. I think I showed this. Oh, this was during a live stream. In Indianapolis. I was 15 years old at the time. I yeah, so I cover the game in this video, but um, it was a fun one. I ended up winning like $1,300 in the tournament as well. I could show the game. Yeah, if, I, I, I guess I'll take a break from playing chess to show chess. My videos help me speed run sleep. Speed run sleep. Nice. That's nice to hear. Kev McGee. Hi. Hi. Blunder champ. Okay, so let's see if I still remember the game. Because I haven't showed the game in a while. Um, I was 15 years old. 2009. This was before I had my driver's license. Before I could legally vote. My rating at the time was 2100 something at least US rating. But then after the tournament, I became a national master. And it was a 2009 US Open. Um, my opponent was John Fedorowicz. I remember before the game, I was expecting this exact position. Like I was preparing for him. And I played bishop f5, expecting queen f3, because earlier that same tournament, he played one of my friends. And he played queen f3 against my friend. So this is a so-called positional line. And this is actually a line that um, a lot of like super GMs have gone into. But I also went into this a bunch against Levy about a year ago in our um, I'm not a GM speech chess championship match. But instead of playing queen f3, he played a move which... I was not at all expecting it was g4 and i remember when he played this i had a vague idea what to do because i had encountered this in an online game maybe like a month or two prior and i remembered that the engine like recommends this move does soccer still say bishop e6 it does okay so i played bishop e6 and i'm basically out of prep at this point White's like overextended on the king side a little bit. So the game continues. He plays h3. Uh, I played, I think I played bishop e7 first, bishop d3, knight bd7, and then he plays pawn f4. So at this point, it looks like he just wants to completely crush me. Um, just storming so fast on the king side. And I should note that the day before the game, he was inducted into the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. Like he's one of the legends of like American chess. And I think his rating at the time was like twenty five something, twenty five hundred something. So f four threatens to trap my bishop, so I get out of it with this move. And then he plays knight f three. And here. Actually, I wonder if I can find the photo. Let's see. There's a photo taken at the precise moment I played my next move. Ah, I can't find it. I'm going to have to dig through my, my archive. Let me do a quick search. 2009. Hey, I found a photo of the game. Oh, wow. Look at this photo. Okay. I'm pretty sure this photo was taken by Chris Bird, who is um, the inventor of the bird opening, but actually not. Chris Bird is just um, a pretty well-known arbiter, and I think he previously like was a photographer too. 
So, yeah, this was me, what, 15, almost 15 years ago, 14 years ago. And yeah, so in the background, we can see Grandmaster Mezgin Amanov and also, yeah, the late Emery Tate, um, who did pass away over five years ago, I believe. Um, the father of, of Andrew Tate. But Emery Tate was um, a very strong international master. And I've, I played Emery, I think, four times in tournament play. He beat me every single time. So anyway, we see the position before he played pawn g4. Somewhere online, online, there's another photo of me playing my next move in this position. Oh, can we see the games against Tate too? Hi from Vienna, Austria. Oh, hello to Austria. I don't know if I have the games digitize against Tate. I probably have them in my old score sheets. I should really dig them up. But anyway, back to this game. Um, this position, I saw F5 might be coming and I'd probably have to move back. So I played what was an attempt at a preventive move, Queen D6. And the goal was to discourage him from playing F5 because then I have Queen G3. But then he played f5 anyway. And he was playing like really quickly too. So I was kind of scared. He's hitting my bishop. And then here I took a really long time like trying to figure out, do I retreat the bishop? Do I go in with my queen? Because queen g3, it's um, it takes a lot of guts to play. But ultimately I decided it looks interesting enough. I didn't see anything obviously wrong with it. And it takes away white's casting rights. And the idea is after he plays king d2, I follow through with knight e4. And it took me a long time to play these two moves. And he was still playing like really quickly. And I went for this position because it just looks insane. Like everything is, is happening here. Like my bishop's still attacked. These bishops are staring at each other. My knights attacked twice, defended once. His king's in check. There's so much potential to further attack the king with queen f2 or g2 or knight c4, or maybe eventually bishop b4. So it seemed like if I'm going to try and get the better of my grandmaster opponent, I might as well try and make as much chaos as possible. And what happened in the game? He took, I took, he took. So some dust is settling. And then I played queen f2. And then we get to a key position where white has only one viable move, which he didn't play. So I want to take a poll in chat. What move should white play in this position? And I'm going to write a poll with every legal option. So what would you play as white? Um, there's queen e2, king c1, king c3, king d3. Only four legal moves. No voting with channel points, one minute poll. And good luck to everyone. So these are the, the options to choose from. Yeah, and he did play a losing move here. So we'll see if Twitch chat can find a better move than the Grandmaster. Do you happen to know GM Gregory Kadenoff? I went to high school with his daughter in oh, Lexington, cool. Kentucky. Shout out Beth Harmon. And he gave me free lessons. <sighs> Was his daughter named Beth Harmon? That would be crazy. Yeah, Kaidanov was actually a pretty influential he was never like my main coach, but he taught at a lot of chess camps I attended as a kid. And he helped show like the lessons he gave on how to use chess base were very inspiring for me. He's one of the first people that showed like basically how to prepare openings deeply with chess base, 
have to prepare for opponents. Okay, here's a poll. Okay, so 56% of people are saying king c1. Queen e2 is 25%. King c3, 14%. All right. So let's start with the moves that fail. King d3 is like instant fail because have a good time. bishop c4 check. And yeah, king d3 is just terrible. Um, queen e2... 34 people wanted to play this move. It looks like a good move, but it's losing. He didn't play this move. The reason why queen e2 is losing is because knight c4 check. The king is tied down to defending the queen. And after, let's say, king d1, knight takes b2. My queen defends the knight through x-ray vision. And after he moves back, bishop b4, the king is forced away from its lady. So queen e2 basically loses the queen by force. But that didn't happen. Uh, the best move, and good job to 56% of people who wanted to play king c1. This is the best move. But he didn't play king c1. He played king c3. And he played this move relatively quickly. And now it's black to move. And like when he played king c3, I was having a hard time believing this was real because I, I saw the move right away, but I, I took probably like at least five minutes to play it, just making sure I wasn't hallucinating. So black to move and find the force win. I think there's a pretty important lesson here is don't develop your king in the opening. Sometimes even grandmasters should uh, need to learn this lesson. Good job to everyone saying bishop to b4. Um, yeah, knight a4 unfortunately does not work because queen takes a4. So not all checks are good. But after bishop b4, this is a more effective piece sacrifice. So I'm luring the king into my territory. Um, first of all, if king d3, it's a nice mate. So if king takes b4, which actually, after I played bishop b4, he resigned instantly, and the game ended in just 16 moves. But if he does take, I would take on b2, and then queen b3 loses the queen. If king c5, queen a3 checkmates. Or if I want to play with my food, queen b5, king d6, knight c4, king c7, queen b6 checkmate. Or maybe even more fun, this, 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 f6 to stop bishop d8, and then castle with checkmate. So many potential funny mates, potential castle mates. I would not have gone for this in the game, though. So anyway, that was my game against Grandmaster John Fedorowicz. My first time beating a GM in a rated tournament game. That tournament helped me get over 2200 uh, US rating. And what else did I get? Oh, and I got $1,300 for the under 2300 prize. Oh, what happens after king c1? I think king c1, it's um, close to equal. Like there's takes, takes here, queen d2. A lot of things can get traded. Let's check with engine. Yeah, maybe black is slightly for choice, but engine just giving equal. Ooh, knight c4 is playable. Oh no, my bishop and then checkmate. Yeah, it's still kind of shaky for white. So if we go further, yeah, queen d2, the main line would be takes, takes, and then somehow it's like, it's equal material and then end game. 
uh, white has isolated pawn, but enough activity to be equal. Yeah, I think he was just out of form. Like it was the last round of the U.S. Open. Um, U.S. Open's a nine-round tournament, so I think he was just like really tired and probably saw my rating and didn't think I'd put up much of a fight. So in these cases, this is where upsets can happen when a player, like especially when the high-rated player isn't taking their opponent seriously or maybe playing too quickly. Anyway, um, hope people enjoyed that. That all came from the question from trying to find the reward thing. Where is it? Man, there's there's been so many requests. I should probably lock them down. Oh, there's a question from Light Follette. I hope you got your answer. <laughs> oh, do you have dreams about chess? Sometimes. Very rarely do I dream about specific positions. But sometimes, like, during or leading up to a tournament, I'll I dream about myself playing in the tournament. I'm not so great at remembering my dreams, though. Okay, let's complete this. And let's play another game. Thank you, Vec. The first time, Brian. Oh, yeah, if you want to analyze further, the game is findable online. Um, yeah, here's... Uh, Chess Games link. I'll share it in chat. Oh, another share photo redemption. Apologies, sometimes it's hard to keep up with chat. Were there norms available? No, it was US Open. Um, I'm not sure if it was even FIDE rated. It may have been. All right. Um, Let's play... Let's play something a bit more standard. I think there is a request for classical Sicilian, although we have a knight c3 Sicilian. g3. All right, I'll play e6. a6. I'm kind of mixing plans here. I do remember Komsky once played rook b8. Let me go play rook b8. I did play this once in a tournament. And the idea is just to get in b5. Opponent's playing pretty quickly. Can I play b4? b4, knight a4. Considering knight f6 here to eventually play d5. h3. h3 usually is prophylaxis against an eventual knight g4. So let's go for d5. Threatening the fork. And take. Wait a minute. You could take with pawn too. Still threatening the fork. It's a question if I want to trade knights. Trying to calculate like takes bishop f4. And then I have bishop d6, but then knight takes. First decision moment. You could also play rook b7. Yeah, rook b7 should be okay. Could get weird. Like rook b7, rook a8. I think it's okay though. Bishop g5 is a move. So probably bishop e6. There's also bishop e7. I have a feeling I'm like already a bit worse here. But let's keep developing. 
And there's a line takes takes is not happening. What if I play this? Opponents made every move instantly. So B4 takes, 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 takes. I don't have Queen E5 check. Oh, just Bishop E7 though. But then Knight F4. Hmm. Probably just have to deal with it. Yeah, I think I'm like I'm done looking at chat for the rest of this game. Like I have to stay focused. I'll try and share what's going through my mind, but. Not the easiest situation. Okay, so b4 is a move. Now b4 is actually kind of timely because there's no 92. Knight a4. Knight a4, maybe bishop d6. Good luck. Appreciate it. Really have to watch the time. Calculating this, this, this. And bishop d6, c4, take. The problem is the knight comes in. And there's knight e knight d seven defending offering the trade. What if I just castle? Take 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 on b two. Maybe I just castle. There's also rook b five. I'm so conflicted. Let's just castle. Oh, queen d7 could come with tempo. Position just feels easier to play for white. Like usually the pawns are like grabbing space, but here they're just more targets. Like even d5, which is defended a bunch, it's pinned to the knight. Okay, so d4 probably this move. A little bit surprised about d4. I take... All right, let's take. Not even really threatening to take. So why has a bishop here? It's really annoying construction. I have this move hitting h3 as well and hitting the rook. And after queen a1, I don't think I can... Maybe I can take. But after takes, takes, takes... I either take the knight or just go for mate. Wow. T 
Take b7. Queen e6. It's getting crazy. I'm down so much time. My opponent really hasn't slowed down much. But it seems now a bit shaky for white. Like a lot of a lot of things are vulnerable in this position. down what for opponent disconnected there for a moment okay I have to take d4 Some either have some Wi Fi issues, or I don't know what's happening. This is a move, Queen B7. Okay, what if I what if I play this? Leaving the tension between the rooks. As if takes takes, the bishops attacked. There's also pressure against the king and the pawns attacked. Queen f3 is not playable because I take the rook. It's not playable here either because the bishops hit. Hmm. I play knight. It's still tricky. Ninety five F three. There's really no good discovery. I could play Queen. What about G five? G5 is so risky, but I think I go for it. So now there's some potential, like if knight h5, check f3, g4. Really tricky position. Okay, g4. Oh, there's queen, queen digs d4. Queen d4, I check. Man, these lines are really tricky. I could play d3. So queen's overworked a little bit. Assuming takes, probably take with knight, although taking with pawn looks fine too. So issue for white, the queen's still tied down to defending f3. G4 is probably coming. That's a move. It's a very strong move. F3. Uh, I'm in, probably in trouble here.
Also, I have some crazy, like, queen d5, d2, which I don't think works. Yeah, in some trouble. Burned way too much time earlier. Take here. If I can draw this, it'll be a big success, just given the time situation. I think I'm forcing a queen trade. So I'm realizing I shouldn't pre-move this. If bishop takes, I take the queen. Okay, make the passer. At least we've simplified. Situation like this, I really wish I had more time. Seems very close to winning. King comes to g2, I promote. Otherwise, this happens. Okay. It's a winning endgame, but still a little bit tricky. But plenty of time. And pre move on the light squares. Okay. Uh, it's like a lot of work there, man. Uh. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was probably an up and down game. Like, I was definitely better at some point, but I was definitely worse from the opening. So, I'm sure there's a lot of lessons to take away. Yeah, like, very imperfect game from both of us. Yeah, opponent, um, I mean, this style of an opponent is actually very dangerous in 10 minute chess, where they, like, they play very quickly and even though at some point my opponent like lost the opening advantage, I'd burned so much time from early on. I think you addict of worms. Oh, it's weird that my opponent lost more points than I gained, especially given the rating differential, but it probably depends on the rating deviation of both players. I was really like doubting myself. It's like so many moments. So I wasn't lying that Komsky has played this as black back in 2006. There was a point where like I was looking for interesting things to play against the close Sicilian. I stumbled upon the Komsky game. I think he won like a really nice game. I used a lot of thematic plans, built up space. Yeah, pretty smooth game on his part. So going back to our game, um, I got in b5. I think this is all pretty standard. Toggle on the engine. 
Yeah, it doesn't like D5. Even though it's still playable. I guess because I have to take with pawn and now this D pawn, it's more of a liability than an asset. So it says B4. Okay, one option is B4 first. Oh, and then playing D6. Anyway, I was slightly worse. And then here I was just kind of reacting. Like it was hard to gauge what was going on. Rook a6 was a, um, I would call this like a clear mistake because of queen c8. Yeah, white should have played knight f4 sooner. Just put the pressure. Also covers h3. And then... Okay, so here, engine says black's winning. The problem was I was like very down on time. I didn't find the right continuation. So queen b7 was like, really bad. I guess I just missed how strong this move is. Because I don't have a great discovery. After g5, I'm already worse, but like not so much... Okay, white still has to find accurate moves. But I still could have been worse. F6. Should have listened to Ben Feingold. I considered queen d5, but after it takes? Oh, b2's hanging. So why is f f6 is bad because after it takes, takes... Ah, queen b3. King f8, queen e6. Yeah, that's hard to find. So we simplified. And it should be like very close to a draw, but I think after queen e6, if anyone can win this position, it's black because of the... Um, my pawn gets to b3, and I have the outside passer potential. Oh, goodbye to Pam. Thanks for being here. But to show, yeah, if white wants to draw here, white can take, take, and g4. And I can't make the outside passer, and this is just a draw. And then gradually, what was the point of no return? Yeah, white had to walk back with the king to survive. Each pawn got too far. Okay. Um, so I played two rapid games this stream. <laughs> I think both games took some work. Let's check my stats. I gained 12 rapid points. Number 36 on Lee Chess. Actually, what's my peak? I'm 10 points away from my peak, which I did hit recently. When are you going for the GM? I do have the GM command. Actually, I have an announcement to make about my next tournament. I confirmed it today, but maybe I'll hold off at least another day before officially announcing. But I will be playing a tournament this month, and it's in a really cool location. And what else to say? It's a tournament I've never played before, but it's been on my bucket list for many years. So stay tuned. Yeah, this is an announcement of the announcement coming soon. So um, I'm going to wrap things up. I'm tired. I'm also hungry. Thanks everyone for watching. I know it was a shorter stream than usual, but it's nice to get some chess in. I still have a long list of opening requests, which I'll have to get to at some point. Um, I'm going to send the raid to Chess Dojo. 
who has like a really cool setup. This is um, a channel that's run by a few different people, but International Master Kostya Kurutsky is streaming on it. And man, look at the setup. So he has a DGT board. Oh, this is so awesome. So he's doing like over the board, but you can follow on the diagram as well. It looks like a very instructive study stream showing Galler's greatest games. So send some good vibes. Yeah, this was a short stream, hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> My previous streams have gone over two hours. When's the next Lee Chess Marathon? Lee Chess Summer Marathon. Let's see. In one month, August 4th, I'm realizing I might not be able to play it this year because I have another tournament, which I haven't announced yet. That's around that same date. 24 hours of bullet chess. Anyway, I'll be back soon. Goodbye. Adios.